Welcome back into Grand Slam Sports. I'm Jay Sodge. I'm Charles Foster. I'm Samuel Gailey. Let's get right into Monday Night Football. We'll begin things with the um, Commanders and Bengals. A great game in that one. The Bengals 0-3 now, guys. I mean, yeah, the Bengals, they came in, they looked a lot better than they had in the past weeks. Uh, Burrow and the Chase, Chase Connected were looking fantastic, in my opinion. The main issue was their offense was not enough offense for how the Commanders did. I mean, Jaden Daniels, he went out there, and he showed why he won the Heisman, and he played fantastic. Sam? It, it wasn't the offense that always lets the Bengals down, it's the defense. The, I think Bengals organization's a cheap franchise. They don't spend money on defensive players. I think they invest in the offense. They haven't even paid Jamar Chase yet. They haven't paid T. Higgins yet. Joe Burrow's contract's coming up, and they're already moving off of defensive players. You saw it here. They're cheap defense on the back end. I mean, if you can only name one or two Bengals defensive players, I can see why they lost Jaden Daniels, especially in his dual threat ability. But the Commanders look good, guys. I mean, Jaden Daniels, that defense looks pretty good. The, the, the Commanders look like a contender in the NFC East this season, possibly. Absolutely, and the biggest issue for Jaden Daniels was how well can he throw it. He only had two incompletions the entire game, and with his ability on the run, like you were saying, they're going to be a scary More, scary more touchdowns, offense. more touchdown passes than incompletions, which is kind of crazy. So, good for my fantasy team. Yeah. <laughs> and on Monday, there were two games, not just one. There was the Jaguars and Bills as well. The Bills put a smackdown on Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. The Jaguars do not look good, guys. Yeah, I mean, the Jags, they've, they've had it rough. The Jags have not had the offensive play. Only 11 carries for ETN. Uh, Trevor Lawrence did not look good. And it's just, the def defensively, the Bills had their first five or six drives where touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. I mean, it was a historic performance from the Bills. And the Jags, they just don't look good. And they have a game against the Texans next week. Yeah, but that leads us into our topic, how good are the Bills actually? Because you look at the Bills, they put a smackdown on the Jaguars, they're 3-0 and now, but have they really faced a good opponent yet? I mean, you got Miami, but Tua was hurt. The Bills are 3-0, and they lost Stephon Diggs in the offseason. How good is Buffalo actually, Sam? I mean, I don't, I don't think, I, th I think the one weak point in any, any good offensive side is their defense, because obviously they kind of have to sacrifice one for the other. Um, they showed their class against the Jacksonville Jaguars, I think, Trevor Lawrence never really got into the game. I think when he got into the game, it was a little, little too late mm. for it, for, for anything, really. Um, so for me, I think that Josh Allen is the real deal. He's been the real deal. I think the Stefan Diggs drama sort of hindered the offensive mindset a little bit because then Josh's like, I got to get the ball to Diggs. Got to get the ball to Diggs. Got to get the ball to Diggs. And like you saw his passing array from this game, I think six, seven different receivers. I think that's going to be the biggest tell is how well these receivers do. And for me, I think the thing that I'm curious to see is, like you said, how do they play against a good team? And yes, the Dolphins, they still played fantastic against the Dolphins, despite Tua getting hurt mid-game. I think that the game against the Ravens is going to be, in my opinion, the biggest tell. This week they play against the Ravens, mm -hmm. and then soon they play against the Jets. Those are some good defenses that are going to cause some issues. I feel like with the Bills... Losing Stephon Diggs might have been a good thing because mm -hmm. it kind of opened the offense mm -hmm. up now and Allen ha is looking at other places. He has Keon Coleman, the rookie receiver now, and James Cook out of the backfield has been phenomenal at, at, the, at the running back spot. And they have plenty of weapons to go around right now, Buffalo does. Absolutely. I mean, you see Shakir, Kincaid, um, they're able to get more opportunities because you can't forget they also lost Gabe Davis. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is one and two receiver that... I, uh, it was a, it's been a rough situation for them. I, I, I never saw Gabe Davis as number two receiver. I thought Shakir was always that man in the background. I feel like if Shakir took over that wide receiver two role last year, he'd be putting up numbers like he is now. Mm -hmm. I never really saw Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis was a tall guy. You know, if you're scrambling out to the right, you can find somebody in the back of the end zone. He's going to just be taller. I'll jump you. I, th I think Shakir, this, is, this team's meant for him. The, the yep. motions, the, the, the trio sets. Post route. I mean, he's got the speed, he's got the durability. I mean, I don't know, I forget how many he caught, but yeah. he definitely involved in the game early. Absolutely. And then going into Thursday Night Football yesterday, you had the Giants and the Cowboys, a bit closer than some might have thought, but the Cowboys don't look as good as they might have been recently, but they still won the game 20-15 to 15 against the Giants. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, in my opinion, Daniel Jones, he looked better. It could be because Malik Neighbors played phenomenal. Robinson played phenomenal. I mean, that helps whenever you have good receivers. 
But Jones, you know, not a single touchdown for the Giants, 15 points of straight field goals. Kick fest. And Kick fest. But th- they, they held the Cowboys to a relatively low amount at only 20 points. So, I mean, some, some wins for the Giants. And, you know, the Cowboys, they got to win, so yay. But, like, the Giants, in my opinion, is what we should focus on here. There's some hope, especially with neighbors and how well he played. I don't, I don't think so. I think it was the Cowboys defense. I think it was the Cowboys defense that let him down. I mean, you saw Micah Parsons injured walking off. The neighbors concussion walking off. I mean, Dallas came out with a win here, but we have to think about all the stuff they sacrificed to get a win at the Giants. I mean, my, if Micah Parsons is out for a long time, that's even going to cripple further the mm. Cowboys defense. But they are coached very well by Zimmer. I mean, he was a, he's a great defensive coach, defensive coordinator for the Cowboys. They still have good you know DBs with Trevon Diggs, and they'll be all right. That defense, I believe, they'll be okay. Obviously, they haven't looked as good as they have in the past years, but the Cowboys should be fine. But, uh, I mean, you see a struggle against Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, I mean, you can say that he didn't put up a touchdown. Okay, that's cool. Like, I get that. That's hard. You know, in that red zone area for any quarterback, it's tough trying to weave it in that, in mm-hmm. those zones. But they put up 15 mm-hmm. with arguably the worst team in the NFL right now. Arguably. But a great receiving core. I mean, Robinson, he's a very solid receiver. And Neighbors, he is one of the top receivers in the draft. So, I mean. But Neighbors is going to be out for at least four games now with a concussion. So we're we're, we're see kind of how that, that all transitions yeah. on that. Looking into what some consider the worst team in the NFL. They got a win last week, though, with Andy Dalton because they benched Bryce Young. Dalton came in. They got the win. Is Bryce Young, is Bryce Young done in Carolina, guys? Personally, I do not believe so, but I do not think that it will be his future. I think that he's going to get a few more starts, but I think that once he gets a chance similar to what we're seeing with Fields, and we're going to talk about it in a little bit, he's going to get that chance to actually grow in a decent offense, and we see it with Darnold as well. I think that he will be just fine, but this is not the place for him. I agree. I, to, to keep it short, I mean, I think he's still young. He's still got a lot of stuff to learn. Um, Andy Dalton came in, more experience, showed it. Absolutely. I mean, if we look at it, like, what if, if he's not to go to this team, if he's not to stay on the Panthers, for you, what is the team that you believe would be best fit for him? Personally, me, I think right now, if he's going to trade it this season, Miami. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Because, because Miami, they, they lost to it for, for possibly this season. I feel like he could fill in that spot pretty well, and behind a decent offensive line with weapons like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, he could flourish in Miami, in my opinion. But that also might expose him for what he is right now. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. My, my pick and my team that I personally would go with is the Titans. Mm-hmm. I think put some pressure on Levis. This Titans defense has proven to be one of the best defenses yep. in the league. Offensively, they have the weapons. I think you put him in that Titans offense, he would have a, the best chance to flourish and actually show himself as the number one pick. And, I mean, but you look at Bryce Young so far in his career, obviously uh, the first overall pick two years ago. How big of a bust is this so far? And how high up in the list of, of the, is this of historical busts? It's rough whenever you look at it and you realize that the Bears got DJ Moore, Caleb Williams, and more from that. Yeah. But that's obviously all hindsight. Bryce Young, I mean, I thought he was that guy too in college. So I can't hate on GMs for thinking the same. But um, I think that it is situation. I think he will bounce back when he gets on a new team. And we'll see. We'll see when nice. that comes. Gotcha. Let's go ahead and head into, like you said, Justin Fields. The Steelers, obviously, they're 3-0 this season. Three defensive wins, you could call it. So how much has Justin Fields actually done for the, for the Steelers in getting those three wins? Sam? <laughs> I, think, I think the Steelers right now are, uh, you know, those game among us. You know, I, th- I think they're the pretenders. I think they're the pretenders right now. They've played some soft teams. They've, they've made out with a couple wins. I mean, but what has Justin Fields really given in the passing range of what they've been doing? I mean, the workhorses, I think, are really the running backs. Jalen Warren really has picked it up in the passing game. And that's just a dump off in the flat and let him do his thing. Like, obviously, you got the run threat, but this upcoming game, especially for the Steelers, for me, is really going to tell. Because if they beat a good team, then I'll, then, I'll, then I'll be like, okay, then maybe there's something. I think for me, I might be in the, the minority or at least completely against you. I think that he has done a great job. I mean, we've seen teams with good defenses that – their quarterback screws them over. Will Levis is a prime example of trying to do way too much and causing issues for his team. Justin Fields, he's done exactly what they need. They're able to get wins. He has a mentor quarterback behind him. This is the best situation for him. And I think that with all these, these weapons that they have around him and the maturity that he's been showing in this offense, I think that Fields has been a pretty big piece of it because if Fields was not playing as mature and as well as he is right now, they'd be, just be the Titans yeah. in, in black. I'm kind of in the middle of you guys. I don't think he's like you know been... The, the, like the, mm-hmm. the, the reason they're winning, I don't think he's been like, like not you know not great, but he's in the, kind of the middle ground. He's, he's doing what he has to do mm-hmm. for the Steelers team. 
and they're 3-0 for a reason, so you can't just go and say, you know, bench him for, for, for Wilson when he comes back. You, you can't, you can't right. do that. He's won three games for a reason. I, I, mean, I mean, I'm not saying he's not a great quarterback. I think he has some it, – it's all about the player profile, right? It's, it's all about where you fit in the mm -hmm. schemes. And I think Pittsburgh did a great job of identifying Justin Fields goes with their run-first attitude. I really like that. I'm just not bought in yet. Mm -hmm. If they go knock off a big team convincingly, yeah. and not even convincingly like blowout, like convincingly like two, three – you know, win, right? Mm -hmm. Then I will be on the Justin Fields train. All right, let's go ahead and head into our pick six segment, beginning with Broncos, Jets. Charles, your Jets against Bo Nix and the Broncos. Who you got? I mean, I think this one's kind of obvious for me. I got the Jets. I think the defense is going to crucify uh, Bo Nix. Yeah, Jets. Jets, uh, for me, yeah, I mean, really nothing. We're going to make it a clean sweep, so hopefully there's no curse this time with the Jets. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and head into an NFC South matchup, but early season one between two, two and uh, between the two and one Saints and the one and two Falcons. Big game in the division here. Mm. Very fun game. I think this one's going to be really fun. I got the Falcons taking this one mm. over the Saints. Um, just they're, they're my pick for this week. Sam? Falcons. Falcons? Two oh, wow. straight clean sweeps. <laughs> uh, and, and that's almost an upset, too, Atlanta. Yeah, it's Kurtz, Kurtz looking good. Kurtz yeah. looking good. More comfortable. But Kirk Cousins looking good so far. Let's go ahead and head into Bengals and Panthers. Andy Dalton revenge game, guys? No. Uh, give me the <laughs> Bengals here. I think that that connection, it's showing. I think that the Bengals are going to they're gonna have a much better week. So, give me the Panthers. Give me the Panthers here, and I'll tell you why. Andy Dalton threw for 350. Bengals have no defense. This need Hendrickson. And I, I didn't even know this quarterback's name, Britt, who got that pick six or a pick on Patrick Mahomes. I don't know anybody on the Bengals' defense. Give me the Panthers here in the surprising one. I'm taking the Bengals. There's no way they, there's no way they go 0-4 by losing to the Panthers. I, I just can't see that happening. So now we got an NFC North matchup, and honestly a big one mm -hmm. in the division, Vikings and Packers. Very, very fun matchup here. I'm going to go with the Packers. I think that even with Jordan Love, if he's not playing, Malik Willis, he's going to have a pretty good game. This is a, a defense on the Vikings that's a little bit concerning. So mm -hmm. give me the Packers taking this one. Give me the Vikings. Mm -hmm. I like the Vikings. Sam Darnold keeps it rolling. MVP conversation. He's, be, he's being different today. I'm also going Packers. Darnold is, is bound to fall back to earth at some point. Yeah. This is going to be the game. Agreed. The Packers defense, mm -hmm. Jair Alexander, is going to scare Darnold, I think. He's going to have finally a rough game. So give me the Packers in that one. Then we head into Sam's team. You got the Niners, Patriots, and San Fran. Charles? Mm. I'm going with the Niners. I don't think that this is necessarily a big pick, but I mean... <laughs> Niners over Patriots. As, as, as much as I want to go my Pats here, um, it, it depends if Jacoby gets it done. I mean, I, I have Sam Fran winning here, so I would be surprisingly happy if Pats win. But, I mean, we're still figuring stuff out, so we'll, 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 we'll get there. Give me San Fran as well in that one. We'll go ahead and now head to our last game of the pick six, Bills and Ravens, Sunday Night Football, big game in the AFC. Give me the Ravens. I got the Ravens upsetting the Bills here. Wow. Um, I think that the speed that they have coming off the edge will make Josh Allen very uncomfortable, and it's going to be a real test on if he can play well under pressure. Give me the Bills. Josh Allen gets out of the pocket, rolls to his right, hits Dalton Kincaid in the end zone again. Charles, hopefully we aren't wrong this week because he's picking almost all different games. I'm picking the Ravens as well in this one. The Bills are bound to lose a game at some point as well. Wow. The Ravens looked good against the Cowboys last week, so give me Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry to just run through the Bills' defense, in my opinion. I agree. And we'll go ahead and head into our last segment of the football segment, the Rookie Report, beginning with Charles, who's the Rookie of the Week. Of course, we're coming back to our Rookie Report. My Rookie this week is none other than my LSU, Jaden Daniels. He had a fantastic game in his, uh, this performance. 250 passing yards, only two incompletions in the entire game, two touchdowns and no picks. He played phenomenal. He did a great job at allowing himself to get on the run. He had 11 carries for 38 yards, and he just did a really good job at playing within his offense. He finally figured out that he has Terry McLaurin, who's a really good receiver, and to start throwing it to him. And he, so far, in my opinion, has looked like the best rookie quarterback. That bomb game. at the end of the game to be Cincinnati, insane. The guy got crushed <laughs> as he threw that, and Terry to catch that. Daniels just looks like the best rookie quarterback so far. Mm. Obviously, Caleb Williams has looked okay, but Daniels has looked phenomenal. Sam? Um, Jaden Daniels? <laughs> I, I got nothing on Jaden Daniels, man. I think he's a heck of a player. I have him as my quarterback. Yep. One, in fantasy, he put up. 25 points? Like, mm -hmm. It was ridiculous. I loved mm -hmm. it. We'll go into my pick now. Malik Neighbors just played last night. Had a great game. 150 receiving yards against Dallas on 14 targets in that game. Also had a big game against Cleveland two weeks ago. Getting in the end zone twice. And this guy, phenomenal so far. 35 receptions, 386 yards, and three touchdowns. Malik Neighbors has been the bona fide receiver one for um, Jones to look towards. And he's been great. I mean, you saw last night, if you look at the highlight, he absolutely crossed up a defender on like, the first play of the game. This guy is a 
great route runner, has great speed, and can catch the ball. And I'm really happy that as an LSU fan, it's becoming a saying that drafting an LSU receiver is like drafting a Kentucky guard in basketball. <laughs> LSU receivers, they're consistent. Neighbors, he's been just that guy, been exactly what you expect from him. As advertised, the main question oh, was, yeah. Dan, can Daniel Jones <laughs> get it to him? And yeah, so far. So far. Malik Neighbors oh. look fantastic. So, I mean, I like to see that from him. All right, Sam, your rookie. Oh, I'm switching into soccer. I know, oh. it's rookie watch. I'm going to catch all of you by surprise because we have a soccer segment next. But I'm going to go with my rookie as Yamin Yamad from FC Barcelona, the left winger. He is 17, 18 years old. I don't know what you guys are doing at 17 or 18 years, 18 years old, but definitely not scoring in the Euros and definitely not playing for FC Barcelona and starting oh, seven man. games. So I have him at seven starts, three goals, five assists. Exceptional player on the left. He plays for Spain, top mm -hmm. tier. He plays for the Spain national team. You saw him score that goal in the Euros against Rabio, who was talking – Talking some smack online, but caught me off guy. caught me off guard with this one. I was predicting a, fo a football player, not, not a football player. <laughs> but I mean, like you said, Lamine Yamal has been phenomenal for Spain, for Barcelona. This guy is lighting it up in the Champions League. This guy is doing great in La Liga. He has been phenomenal off the wing. He's going to be probably one of the best players in a few seasons in the world. Definitely one of the most talented youngsters, and probably going to be mm -hmm. one of the most sought after youngsters, especially yeah. in my opinion. Well, that was our football segment, our Rookie Report. We'll go ahead and head into soccer next on Grand Slam Sports. Welcome back into Grand Slam Sports Soccer on Tap After the Lamine Mall Rookie Report. And we will begin with the Champions League as always. Sam, what matchups interest you heading into the next match day? Going into match day two, I'm really looking at this PSG versus Arsenal matchup. Mm -hmm. Very exciting, very intriguing, especially what will PSG look like without Mbappe? Have they looked convincing? To me, not really yet. If they knock off Arsenal, that's going to be a huge win. And, and it, it, it's, it's funny to see Arsenal, you know, mentioned in the top of these teams now, because they've become probably a top five team in the world right now. Arsenal, they look really good this season. Obviously, this pushed City to the limit recently, but... I, I wouldn't say really good. I wouldn't say really good. I think, I think they're up there. I think that game versus Man City was very telling in that draw. Um, I think if they knock off this team, I think mm -hmm. Arsenal are going to have a lot of questions, yeah. and I think PSG is going to cement themselves as sort of in that rebuild stage. Another game, shocking game that I am going to personally enjoy, I'm going to be watching the Borussia Dortmund Celtic game. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a really interesting one. Borussia Dortmund somewhat struggle against these teams, and Celtic always puts out a nice 11, yeah. especially to start and off Celtic just league. smoked the team. In, in the first match day, one of those teams, I think from Serbia, I'm pretty sure, Celtic looks decent this season over in the Scottish Premier League, too. They, they really do. They really do. Um, last game that I want to talk about is that man-man right there, Antoine mm -hmm. Griezmann. They are going to play as well. They're going to play Sporting Benfica, which is another one of those teams that you're like, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't see them winning, but somehow they pull it out. The, it's those Portuguese teams. you got Benfica, you got uh, Sporting, you got Porto, all those... Portuguese teams seem to cause problems, especially in the Champions League against these bigger squads, because they're very good defensively sometimes. They can hold and hold and hold, and finally, you know. Well, the problem is, right, is that you concede one goal, mm -hmm. and then you sit back and you defend. You make it hard. You make it compact. You're going to have to play down the wings, try to find that cross. Heading into the Premier League, you, Manchester United. Oh, man. Obviously, this makes me very happy as a Man City fan, oh, man. but they are struggling. I mean, not a good season so far for Manchester United. Okay, I, it's I, not, I think it's, this it's, is a topic every year. Well, it's not a bad season. It's just bad plays. It's just mental lapses. We just saw last last match on their on, on their Europa League. Is they that drew. Erickson gives the ball away. He just takes a swing at it and prays. The ball rolls, gets it taken off him, and scores to equalize. Game ends 1-1, and all the Man United fans are standing there shaking his head. They're looking like Casemiro looking at their TV going, I think, it's, I think it's not bad players. It's not the coaching. It's just mental. It's just the mental things. You do the simple things right, so I think Manchester United. You think if on. they clean those mental errors up, they'll be back top four for yeah. the league? 
hundred percent. Get Casemiro. Casemiro again. You saw a couple weeks ago. Mental slip up. Try to pass the ball backwards. Slips. The ball mm-hmm. rolls five feet from. Takes the ball and scores. I think if they clean it up, they have a really good shot of getting back in at least that top ten conversation. Top ten in the Premier League. Top, I mean, because they're eleventh right now. I'm pretty sure eleventh yeah. in the Europa League as well. Yep. After drawing a yep. uh, team from uh, the Netherlands, if I'm, if I'm right, they drew at twin. home. Twin. Yeah. Yeah, they drew the twin at, yeah. at home. That's that. You just can't do that, especially uh, as a, 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 as a powerhouse that they're supposed to be. You just can't. Be drawing games like that. <laughs> and as you head into now Barcelona and La Liga, Ter Stegen out for the rest of the season. The reports are Szczesny might be heading to Barcelona. My man Szczesny, Juventus legend. I love this guy. Um, we saw Jan Sommer uh, as well. Um, very similar goalkeepers. Mm-hmm. Very similar goalkeepers. Szczesny, very comfortable playing out from the back. He's able to find that long ball. And especially, he's coming out of retirement for this. I want everyone to realize he's coming out of retirement for this. So that means it's a big honor, at least for both sides, to be included and in yeah, this transaction. And, and obviously Barca needs this because Ter Stegen has been their, cold, their keeper for, what, 10-plus years now? And obviously went down with that season, that nasty season-ending injury, which just sucks to see for him because this guy is a Barcelona legend. But getting a guy like Szczesny, obviously a little bit older, but he's going to be probably – he's going to fill in quite well. He, well, he's, you're, you're basically here trading one legend for the other, right? Yeah. I mean, Szczesny has been a brick wall for Juventus. Obviously, when he retired – Obviously, they had to find a new goalkeeper. But bringing in, at least for one season, a goalkeeper with some experience, mm-hmm. uh, some experience in the Champions League. Oh, much, a lot of experience. Oh, they, he wins league titles. I think he's going to be a great fit, especially for this like little interim gap where they see where Ter Stegen is at. And looking back into the Premier League now, are the referees ruining this league? It seems like a topic every There's match Michael day. There's Oliver. something. That's Michael Oliver. I put him on there for a reason. I put him on there for this guy. a reason. I mean, he gives out yellow cards like it's candy. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, there's there's been some talk of him favoring Manchester City a little bit. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you watch back at the City-Arsenal game, he gave that red card to Arsenal. A bit uh, sketchy, but I'll take it because we drew. <laughs> yeah, but Silva did the first thing in the first half. This is the thing, this is where it's really tricky, especially in the Premier League, is that they're starting to give out yellow cards for kicking the ball away. Mm-hmm. Incidental or on purpose? And that's where the line gets drawn. I mean, we saw Bernardo Silva in the first half kick the ball away. Yeah, they didn't get didn't receive a yellow card. Yep. And I think that's why I think Arsenal fans are a little bit mad, especially with Michael Oliver. It's understandable. He, uh, Trussard does the same thing. Or I, I was mm. a Trussard. I don't forget. I forget. But does the yeah. same thing, receives a Could second right yellow, yep. and gets sent off. Mm-hmm. And I think, honestly, the referees, especially in the Premier League, I think, honestly, right now it's about – their egos and giving out yellow and red cards sort of needs to be reined in, especially yeah. with the use of VAR, saying, hey, go check that. Yeah, but, I mean, obviously the referees, we'll see if they can fix that up heading into the rest of the season. But heading coming up, we'll have some baseball, myself and Charles, next on Grand Slam Sports. Exit Sam, bring on Charles. We got baseball and the postseason is in just a few weeks October right around the corner here's the current picture as things stand quite an interesting look especially with that six seed in the AL <sighs> I, I will eat my words two weeks ago I said that the Tigers had no chance and this week I think they have the only chance so absolutely I mean we're looking at it here the twins are now three games mm-hmm. back of any spot which is just and guess who the Tigers played in the season the White Sox. Oh, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's looking like the Tigers are going to be doing something to we'll get in a while, them, though, which we'll yeah. get into in a little bit. But looking at this, it's most likely how it's going to be um, other than the Braves are only a game behind right now. So that mets Braves series, which we will also talk about, is going to be really crucial. The Yankees just clinched the AL East yesterday. And then they need to win two of the last three games to get that first seed in the AL over the Guardians. We'll see if they can get that first seed. Obviously, I think the Yankees would want to avoid the Astros, if possible, for that second round. Probably. Because the Astros are uh, historically own us, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but heading into uh, the Yankees, can Judge lead them to a World Series? Obviously, it's been since 2007, since the Yankees have won a World Series. Can they finally get back to the World Series. And the biggest part why I chose this graphic as we talk about it, these are all the Yankees captains throughout history. And most of them, if not all, have all won a World Series with the team. So Judge right now is historically one of the only ones that has not. So that's where the question has been raised is as a 30 plus year old, can he be the one to lead this team? Or is he gonna be one of the first captains to not lead a Yankees team to a World Series? Personally, he has a skill too. I don't necessarily think it's just just a problem. I mean, he's two home runs off of another 60 home run season. It's insane. It's just the team itself 
has not been able to get it done in the postseason. But to me, this is, in my opinion, one of the best teams they've had in a while. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you look at last season, obviously they missed the playoffs. That's horrible for Yankee standards, mm -hmm. missing the playoffs. They were not good last year. But this season, they got back together. Obviously, they've had the rough patches, as any team does. It's a 162-game season. You're bound to have patches that are rough. But they've put it together these last few weeks. They just lost series to the Orioles, but they got the win when it mattered most to win the division. They seem to be better at getting those bigger wins now this season. We'll see if that continues into um, October, obviously. But getting that first round bye could be interesting because we've seen recently teams that get a first round bye lose earlier. Like, like last, year's, yeah. last year's Orioles got the first seed, lost in the ALDS. Mm -hmm. Can the Yankees avoid that, that first round bye hangover? Absolutely, and I think that they'd be pretty fine. I mean, right now they're relatively healthy. The only pitcher that they do not have is Nestor Cortez, mm -hmm. who should hopefully maybe be back by hopefully. the playoffs. Crying. So, I mean, for the most part, healthy team, picked up Chisholm in the off I mean, picked up Chisholm in the trade deadline. I personally think that they are, they're my favorite in the AL, personally, to go to the World Series as much as I do not want them to. I sure do. <laughs> I sure hope they make it there. But let's head into the NL now, where the last wild card spot is going to be decided between these two squads in the series coming up starting here soon. The Mets, the Braves, what do you think? I mean, this series, it does not get better than this. You have two teams fighting for one spot, and they happen to have the last and it, series. I mean, because they're them. rivals. They're, they're, <laughs> and they're NL East rivals. And they have a double header on the last day of the mm -hmm. season. It literally does not get more movie-like than that. I mean, I, it actually it could if both Acunas were playing. That'd be pretty cool. But the issue with the Braves is the Braves are better. I mean, that's just the way it is. But they're the hurt. They're missing, like, quite literally everyone. Austin Riley just got put on the 15-day uh, IL list, and he's now questionable to even return this season. So this is a Braves team that is not healthy going against a Mets team that is mm -hmm. healthy with players like Mark Vientos, who's out here with 26 home runs, and Sean Manea, who's having his best season of his career. I mean, this would be very interesting to kind of and see. If, if you recall, how far behind are the Braves? Is it the Braves a game? are one game behind. So they need to win, what, two of three against yes. the Mets to make the playoffs? Yes. Yeah. That, that, if, if the Braves win that first game, that doubleheader the next that day is going to be insane. Be a lot. Yeah. It's going to be insane. This is going to be a whole lot of fun to watch. Do you think the Mets get the playoff spot? I think that the Mets can pull it off. I think that they're hotter, they're healthy, and it really depends. I mean, I don't remember if Chris Sale will be one of the pitchers, but I mean, my, my Cy Young candidate, he's going to be pitching. Um, and then, of course, you have Manea pitching today. So we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be a very interesting series. I think the Braves are going to pull it out. I, I, I like them. Obviously, the injuries are harming them mm -hmm. somewhat with, with no Acuna and whatnot. But I think they can pull this out. I think they get two of three. I think they sneak into the playoffs. I, don't, I think most people expect the Mets to, do, to, to, win, to win the series mm -hmm. and to make it back to the playoffs. But I'm On top of that, both of these teams still do have one more game outside of this series. Yeah. So that could play into some contention. Um, those results will be in tonight.